This is my welding table. It's one of the most used surfaces in my shop. It's homemade and it's far from perfect, but it gets the job done every single time. In this video, I'd like to demonstrate how I clean this table. I'm not calling this a how-to or telling you how you should clean your table. I'm simply showing what I've found works best for me. If you have a tip, a trick, or even a different technique that you'd like to share, please add it in the comments below. I'm always open to hearing about a different way. Now my table collects swarf, slag, BBs, and berries, just like everybody else's table does. To address that, I like to use the biggest disc possible, a 9 inch grinding disc on a big angle grinder. I always follow that up with a polish. To polish, I use a 7 inch by 60 grit flap disc. And of course, always use the proper safety gear. Once I have all the tools and supplies gathered up, my next step is to always clear the surface. Anything important that's sitting on the table gets put away. Anything that's just been sitting around and is unimportant gets put in the trash, along with all the grime, dirt, and dust. My next step is to grab my broad chisel and knock off all the loose welding slag and BBs. Once everything loose has been chipped away, I move on to the grinder and the large disc. Now when doing this step, I always use a brand new disc and I never tip the grinder up on edge. I found it easiest for this step to divide the table into quadrants and work in a crosshatch pattern. This not only helps me keep track of what's been done, but also ensures that I attack all the problem areas from all directions. You can see the grinding disc really only sparks when it hits high areas, which would be the seam in the center of my table and areas that see a lot of welding. Once I've sufficiently worked the table over with the regular disc, I switch over to the mop disc or flap disc. I always pony up and buy the brand new disc for this step also. I like a 60 or a 80 grit. I think it's a good compromise for being able to clean up behind a regular stone disc and also providing an adequate polish. I think it's really, really important to employ a crosshatch pattern when doing this. I also believe it's really important to not tip that grinder up on edge, no matter how tempting it might be, except in one instance. Flap discs have a tendency to glaze over, especially if they're run flat or if they're run warm. To clear that glazing, I like to go to the edge of my table and work on the bevel. I still avoid tipping the grinder up on its front edge and still hold it flat. I just roll it over the edge of the table. This always helps clear the glazing on the bottom of the wheel. Once I've cured all the problem areas and the table has a really nice mirror shine, I can move on to the next step. This is a step that I always enjoy. It's the icing on the cake. I'll be using my propane torch some SC Johnson paste wax, and my laser thermometer. Once again, I divide the table up into imaginary quadrants and work each section carefully, heating it up between 130 and 140 degrees. The reason I settled on this temperature range is it's a good melting point for the paste wax. It won't damage the paint on the underside of the table, and it's definitely not enough heat to affect the overall flatness of the table. Quite frankly, it's probably no hotter than your table would get sitting in the sun on a summer day. It never ceases to amaze me how much water evaporates out of the surface of the table. 
Once I'm in my temperature window, what I'll do is turn the torch down, set it off to the side, and apply some paste wax. Paste wax is an all-around great way to finish raw metal. It's a pretty commonly used technique in the blacksmithing trade, and it's vastly superior to other options, such as the alcohol-based sprays like WD-40. Now I don't have any science-based evidence that it provides any better of anti-spatter protection than an actual anti-spatter spray, but it sure seems to stick around a lot longer. And unlike some of the oils I've treated my table with before, it doesn't attract any type of dirt or dust or grime, and doesn't even really have a residue once it's dried. And this technique extends well beyond my welding table. I've used it to preserve all kinds of raw metal on all kinds of different projects. If this video was any help to you, give it a like. If you have any tips you can add, please leave them below. And if you're a thumbs downer and you caught a mistake, please take advantage of the teachable moment. Your comments are welcome also. Thanks for watching.